Welcome to Robotics and Automation News webinars, where you can be part of a global event without leaving your home or office. Attend our live webinars and communicate directly with influential professionals in your industry. Hello, my name is Abdul Montakim. I'm editor of Robotics and Automation News.com. In this interview, I speak to Carsten Funky, CEO of Picavi. Picavi is one of the earliest developers of smart glass technology. Carsten makes a presentation in which he provides some insight into Picavi, and I ask a few questions afterwards. Smart glasses, also called augmented reality glasses, were first brought to widespread public attention by Google many years ago. Smart glasses never really found a consumer market, but they have certainly found applications in the industrial sector, especially in warehouses, as Carsten explains. Hello, everybody. My name is Carsten Funke. Um, the English way to pronounce my last name would be Funky, which sounds much better, I think. So, Carsten Funky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm the CEO of um, the US subsidiary Picavi uh, Limited. And yeah, I'm responsible for the worldwide sales activities as well as uh, business development and uh, marketing. Picavi is a, a smart glass solution for uh, the logistics um, sector. So we are experts for the logistics and um, we uh, use uh, Google Glass um, in our projects. And um, yeah, uh, that's, that's the reason why you see on the left side, it's a 46 gram. It's a very light device and it's very comfortable to wear. And for us, this is, uh, yeah, one main topic. So um, the workers have to accept this as a daily working tool. And of course, if it's a light device, this helps a lot. So um, we have some really good uh, results in, yeah, increase uh, productivity, uh, reduce the error rate. Um, it's very easy to learn. So you have um, 15 minutes um, to uh, be in a pick process. And um, yeah, that's what, what makes it very intuitive to work with a smart glass solution. So most of the people uh, already know about augmented reality, but just to give you an idea how it looks like. So some people know the head up displays from uh, from the cars and this is exactly the same technology so you have all the process relevant information in a little screen which appears uh, 60 to 80 centimeters in front of you so um, you have this information with you all the time and this is a big advantage compared to uh, RF solution uh, because uh, there is no handling. Uh, you have both hands free to do the picking. That means you can, uh, you do not have to uh, grab something to look at it, to get your information, uh, put it away to do the pick in the low shelf, for example. So here you can do all the things at the same time. And that's where we get very good results um, in, for example, time uh, we use for, uh, for the pick. So yeah, Picavi is in the uh, smart glass uh, business since 2013. Uh, we are a Google partner since 2012. So we know uh, the, the complete history about uh, the smart glasses. And yes, so we are one of 17 partners. So we are the logistic expert um, so if you talk to the Google guys today and ask uh, for a project in your warehouse, then they would name Picavi as their partner. Um, and yeah, we're very proud to be uh, one of the, the partners. Um, at the moment, we are the world leading provider of Smartlast solutions. We are talking about more than 90 installations worldwide. So we just recently got Caterpillar as our new customer in uh, in the US. So I'm working with PepsiCo in the US. We are working with uh, Harley Davidson in the US. So some quite famous uh, brands, I would say. And yeah, um, this is uh, the situation at the moment. So I think we can 
or skip, or maybe we just talk about the different realities. Um, so everybody knows a virtual reality. It's a closed system. You do not have access to the real world. It's, uh, it's all in the virtual reality. Um, this is for the gaming sector, I would say. Um, then we are talking about the augmented reality. So you have ex still access to both worlds, but you have a, a cut over uh, different worlds. And what we think it's the best um, uh, for motion intense uh, meant to product logistic processes is assisted reality. So you have the complete access to both worlds and we assist you with a kind of reality um, to yeah, to make your pick process as easy as it, as it can be. So there are two different uh, systems out there. Um, we're talking about the look around and see through display. Um, most of the time, yeah, nearly all our projects work with the Glass Enterprise Edition. Um, the look around system, they have some advantages because you can change the system to both eyes, but you still have a, um, a different weight. So you can see here, you have 112 gram instead of 46 gram. And yeah, every gram counts um, if it comes to a, a whole shift, 10 hours, for example. So that's why we work with the Glass Enterprise Edition. Yeah, and now uh, this is exactly what a worker would see if he uh, wears one of the Picavi glass. So um, we say the user interface is important. Uh, we say less is more. Uh, that means we don't want to uh, provide too many information at the same time because we think only the process relevant information in every certain process step is important for the workers and not give him all the information you have in your system just because you can do that. So this is not the Picavi way. So as you can see on the left side, we can provide pictures um, like the tomatoes here. Um, we can of course give you the pick quantity. We can also provide the pick or put position in your pick card or in your uh, low shelf. And um, yeah, we also uh, work with an um, additional device. It's called PPC. You will uh, see it later in the presentation. And uh, this allows you to program buttons to jump into uh, exception menus like uh, jump back in the process steps, change the quantity, do a kind of quantity correction. And um, yeah, this is what we, what we show here. Yeah, so at the moment we talk about um, over 80 customers. So there are a lot of uh, customers working with our solution here in Europe. And as I mentioned before, there are some uh, in, in the US already. Uh, we just recently started. Um, we were concentrated, focused on the European uh, market um, at the beginning, but we we received more and more inquiries from North America, and that's why we decided um, to open a subsidiary in the U.S. Um, last year. And yeah, so we have big success. We're very happy that we have. Uh, more than three customers now in, in North America, which is still not huge, but it's a very good start. And yeah, with Caterpillar as uh, our latest uh, customer, um, that, that's a really big name and we are really, really happy that we work together with them. So do you want to see a, a video here, which I can present as well, how, how the system works in, in life? That would be perfect. Okay, perfect. So let's have a look uh, to a video. It's one of our customers in uh, Worms, which is here in Germany. Okay, just have a look at the video. This installation works with um, 
100 glasses at the moment. So it's a quite big installation. So the information, this is what he sees in the screen, which you see in the, in the bottom of, of the screen. Okay, so yeah, we have lots more, um, but I think that's that's okay to get a, a rough idea how a, a typical pick process or setup process uh, works in in a warehouse. And um, yeah, the next slide is a uh, very interesting slide. It's provided by a customer, and um, that was really one, um, yeah. Uh, important message for them uh, after they did the eva evaluation um, in their warehouse. So they used to work with a voice solution and uh, here they measured um, the productivity um, in percentage in week one. So here the darker line shows the voice solution and the brighter blue line shows the glass solution. And as you can see here, uh, the productivity um, range the, uh, our worker with the vision solution reached at the, in, in the first week was 77%. And in week number two, it was already 87%. So after five weeks, the big buy uh, vision solution uh, reached a uh, productivity of 96 percent which is uh, a quite high uh, percentage and here the important message is how fast are new workers in a very high productivity in a short time and uh, compared to voice that for them that was really a, a huge message because they have a lot of uh, temporary workers and these temporary workers need to be in a pick process as fast as possible and this is what our solution can do on top of this we reduced the um, startup time and we reduced as well the error rates and um, yeah the whole package then was uh, for them uh, good enough to make a decision and uh, yeah they they bought um, Kind of enterprise license um, and they roll out to yeah all their warehouses worldwide so um yes so just to show you the picavi ecosystem and this is the device we were talking about at the beginning uh the ppc so the battery of um yeah all the smart glasses uh um, on the market at the moment uh, do not last long enough to provide power for the whole shift. So uh, you need to have an external device to increase the battery life. And we developed uh, a device which has some additional buttons and these buttons are programmable. That means you can um, easily program the buttons and if you press uh, two buttons, for example, here, you can jump immediately to uh, any exception menu. That uh, saves a lot of time because most of the customers, for example, who use uh, SAP um, as their WMS, uh, 
they need to strictly follow the SAP given menu. And this is something we can skip or we can jump into uh, certain screens um, just by pressing the two buttons. And this is something you can see here. Um, oh, sorry, let's go back. Um, where it says Menge, I'm sorry, that's German, it means quantity. And if you have a look at the screen, this is our exactly the two buttons which are um, highlighted here. Um, you have to press to jump into this exception menu. So um, the new product, latest product is the Picavi cockpit. And I think the, gives you a lot of um, opportunities to measure things which you are not able to measure with your WMS. So uh, basically the Picavi cockpit um, consists out of three products. It's um, the MDM tool, like the mobile device management tool. It's the analytics tool and it is the configurator tool. So um we have like 80 90 installations now and we have a lot of uh, glasses in warehouses and of course you need to manage the glasses uh, via a central position and this is what the mobile device management does so you can see all your active glasses in your warehouse but also you can for example uh, do a kind of screencast, means you can um, see the working screen of one glass in your warehouse. This is very important for training purpose, for example, because you can always uh, see the screen the worker sees. If the worker has any problems, then he can also um, get in contact uh, to any supervisor and you can easily just have a look where he is stuck, in which screen he is stuck, and give him some uh, support. Another function is the one scan setup. That means you have like 50 glasses in your warehouse. There is a peak season, and you need to have 20 more glasses for this peak season. So then we can ship the glasses, and you can um, generate a barcode and scan the barcode with one of the glasses and your configuration file will be set in the glasses automatically. So there's no need for us to do any programming and on the customer side as well, no need to do any programming. Another part is the configurator part. This is for our high volume customers. Um, they most of them work with their own IT department and they do some changes in the process uh, quite frequently and uh, this is the reason why we had to develop this kind of configurator so the configurator allows the customer to do his own changes that means if he does changes in his back end he can also change the process in the front end like add another scan, um, reduce the process step, um, or add another process step. So this can all be done with the Picavi configurator. Another powerful tool is the analytics. And the analytics has um, yeah, different functions, like we can show a Wi-Fi heat map, for example, uh, the Wi-Fi heat map um, with regards to the pick position means uh, each pick position um, can be, uh, the Wi-Fi signal strengths can be shown on, uh, the, on the analytics tool. Um, and there, there's a lot more, like um, the glass have a lot of built-in sensors. So you can measure the steps between each pick position uh, you can um, track the movements of the workers. So you can double check the way optimizing of your WMS. And uh, another very important part is uh, the screen time. Uh, we measure the screen time. So 
just to give you an example, if you start a process with SAP, for example, and you have a setup process, you have a pick process, and you have a drop-off process, then most of the time, the time the uh, WMS can track is the time at the beginning and the time at the end. But everything in between is not is hard to measure. So what we can do, because we have the screens and we can put timestamps to each screen in the glass, we can tell you exactly, look, here is where the setup process starts, here is where the setup process ends, this is the, the travel time to the next pick, this is the travel time between each pick, this is the time you have for your drop off, and this gives you a lot of uh, data, and with this data you can improve your process. So, and this is something we can show in a heat map. Also, ABC analyze, like um, are my fast mover products in the right position in my, in my low shelf, for example. So because we can see um, by the sensors of the glasses if the product is down on, on the bottom of the floor or in the middle zone, uh, grab zone, or in the zone on top. So that means if my A movers are in the wrong position, I can easily see that in the kind of uh, map and then change that, of course. And yes, um, the let's say standard KPIs, um, this is something we can track, of course, um, as well, like pick, pick per hours, orders per hours, um, how, how high is the pick density, um, and this is the standard functionality of the PKB cockpit, and uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, you have four options to, to uh, control the glass. So um, you can use the PPC. This is the additional advice uh, we uh, discussed before in the, in the presentation. But also, and this is something we developed uh, for customers as well, is you can control the glasses by voice. That means for some certain exception menus, you can just easily say exception menu, uh, quantity correction, and um, the glass reacts to your voice. Um, we can also do voice output. This is what we did with a customer recently. Um, they had some issues uh, with the pick quantity. So if the pick quantity is higher as one, um, the people, uh, always struggle to pick the right uh, pick quantity. And now we gave them a, a voice output. That means if the pick is higher than one, the glass says, attention, pick higher than one, pick five. And this is, uh, of course, something which reduces your error rates significantly. Yeah, interfaces, um, we work with all kind of WMS providers. We did all kind of protocols. Um, we do web service interface. We do telnet projects. We do a lot of sub SAP projects, ITS mobile, um, and and this is what the slide shows here. Um, which is important is we are talking about a direct communication to your WMS. That means we do not need any kind of middleware. Our communication takes place uh, between the glass and the WMS on the other side. Yeah, this is uh, the Picavi head start set. Um, the batteries, the facts of the batteries. And yeah, so now we um, see the ring scanners. So to do the scanning, um, we have also an internal camera which can do scanning, but for some ergonomic reasons, it makes sense to use a kind of a Bluetooth connected ring scanner. And um, yeah, the latest and very comfortable version of a, a scanner is the ProGlov. Um, so you can scan very comfortable, it's a very flat device on top of your handbag. And, um, 
yeah, it it has a quite good quite good um, scan performance and uh, last very long, so you can do more than three thousand scans, and uh, that's what a lot of customer take uh, shoes at the moment to do the projects. Yeah, as said, we also have an internal camera. So most of our customers do not use the internal camera to do scanning. They use the internal camera to do uh, quality control, like uh, in a receiving process, damaged goods, uh, take a picture, do some photo documentation, um, which uh, directly works with the data bank in the back. Um, you can yeah, take pictures of certain packaging rules which are given from customers. Um, some customers use it to uh, document that the truck is uh, correctly loaded. Um, this is what yeah, most of the customer use the internal camera for. Of course, we provide 24-7 support. We have worldwide uh, warehouses. Yeah. And here are the benefits in summary. Um, increased productivity, error reduction, short training time. And yeah, this is what the Picavi uh, solution can do. One look, one pick, that's it. Thank you very much, Karsten, for a, a very, very interesting presentation. I've got a few questions, if you don't mind. I'll try to limit them to a few. I've written about 10 here. Um, I was wondering, because I'm not an expert on logistics, I haven't really looked at, uh, looked at it for a long time. Um, I'm wondering what the previous or traditional low tech method of doing this kind of work is i know you mentioned voice but that's again a kind of technology oriented what's a basic warehouse like you know uh, do people have pieces of paper on which the order is listed and they go around looking for the aisle and doing everything manually does that still exist or has everybody got some level of technology Yes, uh, hard to believe, but this is exactly as you said. So you still see some warehouses and they do a paper-based picking. That they use paper to yeah, get the information where the next pick is. They um, do check marks uh, beside the, um, the information. And um, this is something you still see, but I would say most of the uh, warehouses um, with the customers we we visit uh, that they use voice or RF guns so they scan somehow scan to verify the item or the right pick position right and uh, yours is although you say that you started or started developing this uh, product in 2012 2013 which is obviously six seven years ago it's um or seven or eight years ago um it's still a relatively new technology yes and certainly relatively new to the market itself what do you think the I know you've got customers and a good number of customers, I must say, uh, but is, is there more potential in the market? Are there, is it a big market that you're only just slightly tapping into or do you think there's, there is a limit to how many people, how many customers would want this level of technology? Perhaps sure. because of the, I imagine the difference in cost, I imagine this is more expensive. So, I mean, first of all, the, when we started in 2013, the, the first two years we developed the solution. So we were not visible at the market. So we started um, doing the sales activities, doing the marketing um, at 2015. So our, our first installation is from late 2015. That was the first installation here in, in Germany. And to answer your question, so for me, I see, 
huge potential uh, in the market and uh, we can see that with the customers. Of course, if you have a new technology, you have to do some work at the moment, like pioneer work at the moment. But uh, today, people have their own numbers, they have, their own, uh, they have done their own evaluation and now they roll out to other warehouses. Um, so if customers buy uh, enterprise license for worldwide warehouses, this is for me a good sign that they, that they believe in the technology, see the results, see the benefits and start rolling out. So when they developed voice, for example, it was uh, 20 years ago and the technology was not at the stage where we are today. And if they had the chance um, this time to do a kind of visualization, provide any information in a, in a little display, then they, they had done that. But that was not the time. So if you just see the voice installation, and for me, sorry for all the voice guys out there, but for me, the voice uh, is, so let's say, there will no be any new installations, voice installations in the next four years. So because everything voice can do, we can do as well, but we can also provide uh, information and visualize certain steps. We can provide colors to uh, identify the right pick zone we can provide pictures uh, to pro to identify the right item in a very fast way and that's something voice can never do so anything which works with a kind of augmented reality voice cannot do that and i think this is the future so the potential is big now we're talking about our guns. Yes, our Afghans today work also with Android operating system. They can provide information as well. But here, the big thing or the big advantage of the smart glass solution is how you provide the information. Where do you have access to your information? It is always in front of you. You do not have to grab anything, look at it, take it, put it away. Uh, pick your box out of the shelf. This is something you do not have to do with the smart glass solution. You get the information even while both hands are free and you pick the box out of the shelf. So for me, both technologies, um, so the voice technology, the, for me, no reason to make a decision uh, pro voice at the moment. Uh, RF is still something um, you can work with. Certain processes are okay to do them with, um, with RF solutions. Um, but the overall potential for a technology like a pick by um, vision solution is, is huge. Yeah, it's a, it's a very, thanks for that perspective. It's a very interesting uh, insight uh, that you're giving uh, us, um, uh, the readers uh, and viewers. I've written articles about voice um, and I've also used uh, things like Google Docs, uh, which, um, you know, the word processing, uh, online word processing application called Google Docs. Mm -hmm. That sometimes takes, well, it, it, you can verbally uh, use your voice to dictate what you want to type and it automatically types it for you. And I find that it's, although it's very, very good, it's just not quite good enough. To, it just makes too many mistakes and um, you, you end up spending more time correcting those mistakes. I don't mean to equate it to whatever voice systems there are in the logistics sector. Um, uh, you know, so I'm not trying to say that it, it has any flaws or anything. I'm just saying that I find that the technology probably is more challenging to develop to a level that is required, to the level yeah. of accuracy and things like that required, because everybody speaks differently and, and whatever. Whereas a vision system based on camera and barcodes and things like that, 
um, it you know got more potential to be reliable because it's seeing a standardized printed or uh, you know an object yep. you know so, so yes uh, um, correct so i mean the the voice engine we use is not the google voice engine and another important thing here is if you talk about google docs for example this is always connected to a server somewhere and there is a communication via the internet going on to give you the information back and forward here in our case the smart glass has an offline version of voice commands and we do not allow like um, a question what will the weather be tomorrow morning because that's not of interest for a worker i mean maybe it is but we, we do not allow that that means only for exception menus um 10 percent uh at a day this they can use for these 10 percent they can use voice to command the glasses and all the voice um commands are offline in the glass and it works quite good much better than all the online um uh, speech solutions and uh, this is maybe the reason why you can use that um, without any problems in, in in a warehouse when you started developing the google glass uh, when you started developing applications around or uh, the google glass did you yeah. have logistics as a sector in mind or did you just develop it for because i remember seeing when the Google Glass was first um, reported on in the media many years ago. They talked about, they, they sort of pictured people walking in the street and being able to see maps and other information. And it seemed like it, it was being pitched as a consumer product. And what I, what I found very interesting is that it, although I can't see any consumers using it, I haven't heard of anything, but certainly in industry and logistics in particular, it seems to have found a definite market and uh, it looks like it's going to grow. Are there other markets that maybe it could grow into other, um, other sectors like manufacturing and so on? And within logistics, what are the other applications that maybe it could be used to, to, towards? So, um, Picavi, we, we were always, we always, or we all have a kind of logistic background. So we, we started, um, before Picavi, we started with a company and we developed a kind of pick to light system for bakeries, um, which was already this time already very flexible with the bus system. But we were always looking at smart glasses because uh, we thought if, uh, if the smart glass becomes a real wearable, <clears throat> then uh, it's a good time to start uh, working on a smart glass solution because that um, simplifies a lot of processes in the warehouse. And uh, so we always had a kind of uh, a logistic uh, focus. Um, there are of course a lot more uh, sectors um, which uh, can use glasses and we can see that with our customer as well customers as well so for example for a big uh, pharmacy company uh, we do kind of checklists um, we show a kind of checklist for medication and they can work through a checklist by voice and do uh, check marks uh, behind each uh, question we ask the, the worker with the system. Um, you can do kind of maintenance uh, stuff with the glasses, remote services. Um, some doctors use that to do their um, surgeries and all that. So um, there are a lot more um, use cases to work with a smart glass. Um, for me, but that's maybe because we are in the logistics sector, um, the highest potential uh, has the logistic part. Yeah, it looks like it. it uh, certainly, as I say, it's um, a market that seems to have given, you know, the, the Google Glass or this kind of product has 
found a definite place in the logistics market. So, and that's very interesting because it is an interesting technology. Yeah. And um, I'm glad to sort of see it around uh, sometimes in, in stories that we cover. Um, in, t in terms of, as I say, I'm not a logistics expert, but um, as far as I understand from the customers that you deal with and the way you're talking about, it, it's mostly intra-logistics. So within the company itself, you know, from the warehouse to manufacturing plant, for example, that's mm -hmm. what the, the, the guys, the workers are picking the products for, uh, as far as I understand it, or, or is it actually for, you know, uh, eventual delivery to, con to, to the end customer, the consumer, or, or is it a variety of different things that uh, your customers use it for? Yeah. So, uh, yes, at the moment, uh, we're talking about, uh, mostly talking about intra-logistics. So, uh, as you said, in a, in a warehouse. And, uh, but we, we have some, we did some um, pilots with the, the post, for example, and they did some testing to do, uh, to work with the, uh, with the guy who delivers uh, the box to your house. And I mean, you just have to imagine um, this does not exist today, so this is a kind of vision. You just have to imagine that your face ID, for example, which works already with your Apple phone, um, that the the guy who uh, delivers uh, your package, uh, he hands it over to you, just uh, looks to your face with a smart glass, it uh, scans the face, gets the face ID, uh, the verification that you are the right person, and then uh, the package is shipped. So that will be for, for sure the future. Um, there's still some open questions. Uh, how do they get the, uh, the, the information and uh, yeah, which server do they talk to and uh, is the signal good enough um, and, and all this, but I mean, it's very easy to just imagine that there will be a lot more use cases in the future, in the very near future. Okay, that's in the abstract as in generally for the industry, but I was wondering specifically for your business, are you looking to diversify into other products? Uh, you, you explained about assisted uh, reality. Um, there are different kinds of, uh, you know, there, there's augmented and virtual. Are you thinking maybe of going into any of those or are you thinking maybe of um, uh, developing outside of the logistics area or are you going to concentrate on, on developing within the logistics uh, sector? So uh, at the moment we are uh, thinking of developing for the logistics sector because this is where we are the expert for and this is uh, what, we, what we think is our core business. But I mean, if you put glasses on the table with customers, then they create a lot of ideas and we step by step open uh, our focus and do more and more uh, things offside uh, logistic, uh, let's say the standard logistic uh, part. And um, yeah, this is, this is something we slightly open uh, more and more and uh, the thing we focus at the moment really is the analytics tool because all the customers using the smart glasses they use 10 or 20 percent of the uh, opportunities smart glasses can give to you uh, with all its built-in sensors and this is uh, something we really focus on we see a uh, a huge benefit for the customer to improve the process. So to get, it's yeah, the best word is big data. The more data you get, the better, and you, the more you can improve your process. And I think this is a really uh, important thing in the future. And this is something we focus on, what kind of benefit we can give to the customer to improve the process, which, data he does not have today and which uh, which data can we take from the glasses with with all his sensors uh, with all its sensors and uh, this is something we we focus on today and i mean this also includes kind of 
uh, indoor navigation, for example. This is something um, I've been asked a hundred times, um, what about indoor navigation? And I mean, if you just imagine today to measure your steps between each um, pick position, if I do that with a certain amount of workers in a warehouse for a, a long time, then I have a very good um, idea of uh, the steps between each big position. And then I'm not too far away with some sensors or some uh, triangle uh, position uh, with, um, uh, to, to coordinate and do a kind of indoor navigation. Right. Uh, and lastly, uh, I was wondering if you could share any numbers about your company in terms of uh, financial data, for example, turnover and things like that, or uh, at least number of employees and, and perhaps number of offices uh, worldwide. Uh, any numbers that you can share with us? Yeah. So we started as a so-called high-tech startup. And yes, of course, we have some investors um, invest a lot of money to make it happen. We started with uh, 10, 10 employees here uh, uh, with Picavi. Uh, today, we, uh, we are close to reach 50 um, employees. Um, we do a turnover last year of uh, three point something a million euro, um, which is uh, which is quite good, but uh, we still need to to uh, do more. Um, yeah, but I think that's that's all I I, I would share in this uh, on the financial part. Thank you very much. That uh, that uh, more than. Uh, I expect it actually, so I really appreciate that. People like to, we have a lot of investor, investment experts um, reading our site, which surprises me. I thought it'd be uh, probably more than 90% engineering background people, but it turns out that uh, there's a fairly large number of people who uh, look for investment opportunities. Um, and I guess this would probably be a very, very good, even now, uh, after what well, quite a few years of companies like you being in operation, even now it's a fairly new field, and there's probably lots of opportunities for investment, I suppose. So um, yeah, I do appreciate that. Thank you very much. Send us an email at sales at robotics and automation news dot com to register for one of our many upcoming webinars. And if you'd like us to host your webinar. We have a range of options, including long-term lead generation packages and marketing campaigns. We look forward to hearing from you soon.